Pick up your gear and open your chests. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey. It's a brand new day. Hello. Say something. Something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Silent yeah, waving. That's it. Yeah. That's, it was on cue though. It was. I love that. Interpretive one dance will be how we're doing this entire episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, hi everybody. Welcome. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're back after another two week break. We're back for another episode of Rivals. Oh, it's nice to be back. With everyone. I really don't know how to do this when we yeah. don't. I mean, uh, I know we we have a DM, but yeah. there's no like designated DM. I don't right. know how this works. Oh shoot! You know, I thought the overlay shifted on my in my Zoom. I got to move it over so it matches because I was like, oh, I'm not GMing today. I'm not going to be in the center frame. I'm going to be in my usual bottom left pocket. No, we are nope. not moving. No, no. We are not moving everybody around for no, every episode. Not, Absolutely guys, not. Just me privately. Just me privately. Don't worry. Wow. This does not affect like, anyone. Mm. Oh, Other than my Beth, own producer, set. DC, spin the wheel. Just randomize us. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. God. Too much work Who's for run DC? that episode, like that campaign session where you're like, oh, you randomize character slots, where it's just like. I mean, we kind of we kind of did that in the podcast where I had two of my players had to switch characters twice throughout the course of the show and two times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love a Freaky Friday. I think that's really fun. You know, that's so funny because the name of the episode, the first time it happened on our show was Wacky Wednesday. Yes. Hey. <laughs> uh, wow. but we got to thank the folks that are, are responsible for us uh, being here. Right. Uh, but they introduce... don't know who we are. Yeah, we, we don't know. Who we are. That's right. I'm so this sorry. Is what yeah, yeah. This is what happens. <laughs> nobody has like DM under their right. window. So nobody knows like how Free to start this thing. Yeah. However, I'm just going to say, Masood, tell everybody who you are, uh, who you're yeah. playing, and what your pronouns are. Thank yeah. you. Great. Hey, everyone. I'm Masood. My pronouns are he, him. I play Gosric Nomad. Everyone's socialist, businessman, druid, construct. Finally made that true. Uh, and uh, his pronouns are also he, you. Uh, let's go clockwise. I almost said counter. Let's go clockwise <laughs> over to Cal Sharif. Ooh. Clockwise. Clockwise. <laughs> Is that a new measurement? Like, unlike Gregorian? Mm. Oh, please. Oh, oh, no. It's how many times a cow needs to circle you. It's cow clockwise. <laughs> You're muted, we already, we already have we live in the darkest we already time. Have <laughs> lock, so now we have a cow lock in addition to high lock. So thanks. Thanks for that. Nightmare. 
<sighs> okay. Oh. Why don't uh, why, I'll do mine and we'll come back to Sharif once uh, <laughs> Sharif has his audio fix. So hi everybody. I'm Eugenio. Uh, I'm DM Jazzy Hands and I'm playing Kent, our Phantom Rogue slash uh, uh, Grotzd Bard. I don't know. Uh, both of our pronouns are he him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what what is Kent? You didn't say what Kent was. Oh, is it Tiefling? Is it Phantom Rogue slash Gosric Gosric Grotzbard Tiefling. <laughs> Thank you. A Gosric. God, Tiefling. Can you imagine <laughs> a Gosric <laughs> Bard? Oh my god! Progress. Wolf. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's me. I'm gonna gonna glance up above me and see if looks like worried face. So maybe not. Hello. Yet. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, uh, terrific. I'm not, I'm not using my good mic, unfortunately. So uh, it's okay. for show. Okay. Uh, for some reason, it's. Uh, I guess it worked earlier, but not now. It really um, it was working earlier. Yeah, yeah, it was working. Right. Yeah. Um. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Sharif. I've been playing Shaka, Tiefling, Celestia, Warlock. Uh, he, he, him, and I'm he, him as well. Uh, and now oh, continue with clockwise. Call Call yes, lockwise. well, clockwise comes to me. Hi, yep. I'm Brian. Um, I will be playing Virgil, your Asimar Storm Sorcerer. Virgil's pronouns are he, him. My pronouns are he, they. Oh, and me. Hi, I'm your sort of kind of DM today as I popcorn us around various times and places and things. Uh, but Tanya, I play Sisa Storio, a paladin, druid, barbarian, and pronouns are she, her, and then I'm playing NPCs, so those pronouns are their various pronouns, depending on who shows up today. Please, Latia, save me. <laughs> okay, hi. I am here to save you. Uh, hi, oh, God. Hi, me. Uh, it's me. Swing and a miss. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, it's it's bad. It's help. It's bad. Uh, but I'm Latia. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I play uh, everybody's favorite air coker monk, Tahani, whose pronouns are also she, her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which brings it back around to Masood. Perfect. Now, now go back to the part. Now yeah. back to the part. There it is. Now they Thank know who you. we are. So that's perfect. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure the chat and everyone at home appreciates a little semblance of order. Uh, and speaking of the chat, uh, I, we've usually been doing this at the end, but I figured we'd actually switch it up this week. I want to thank everyone who funded us on Indiegogo. Um, this season would not be possible without you all. This, like, us doing what we're doing right now would not happen without the community support and everyone coming in and, and wanting to see the end uh, or maybe not the end but where the journey for the rivals goes um and we really appreciate that uh we wouldn't be here without you like i said and gosh it means the world to be able to tell the story and thank you all for that um we'd also like to give a special thanks to our sponsors who help make our game more awesome you know we use DD beyond for our digital character sheets and access to book content. You can check them out at dndbeyond.com. Um, there is a giveaway happening in chat right now. You have to be here live for it, so make sure you're keeping an eye on that. Um, we're proud to be sponsored by Die Hard Dice. Ooh, check them out at dieharddice.com and use the code RIVALS for 10% off. They have beautiful assortment of dice. Some of them are very shiny and very blue, so if you have a character Very who's... shiny. <laughs> Color combos are blue and a metallic. You got options. Uh, or anything in metallic. There's a lot of choices. Uh, also not metallic. They've got a lot of options. And if you want to sound oh so silky smooth like the Rivals crew, you can use blue microphones. You go to crew.bluemic.com slash rivals to go get that. Um, you can also, if you're looking for any geeky gear or nerdy swag, you can just head on over to Stormcrow. Mm. I feel like your mug is here more often now that we're bi-weekly. Wait, and you know what? That's the great part of the system is that because it runs on a weekly shipment cycle, that it has been rotating back to me just in time. So it has been a nice uh, sort of reoccurring system for me to advertise the back pages of Stormcrow, where you can find all sorts of things there and some things you should not find. So venture at your own risk. Uh, and I did not send you there. Don't tell anyone at Stormcrow. I've been mentioning it. Um, <laughs> But if you go to shop.stormcrow.com slash rivals, uh, uh, dot com and use rivals on checkout, you can get 15% off. Uh, and they've got a lot of great stuff still available. Um, ooh, and this one I'm ex particularly excited for. You all know we're available in Idle Champions by Codename Entertainment. If you type exclamation code, then for this week's a free Electrum Chest, you can get that. Also, just a note, you can get all of us. All of our characters are now available in uh idol champions you can run the full rival squads with even some of their friends from the other universe if you got a, a big enough lineup formation 
Um, you can get Virgil, Kent, Chaka, Solis, uh, Tahani, and Gosrick, as well as a bunch of familiars. You got Disco, Pets, Fenris, so many options. Um, and just so you all know, they're stacking multipliers for the characters. You can make them more powerful than before with a little passive rivals boost. There's also different skins available for the champions. Uh, they've got some that are available. You know, there was a spell jammer set that came out. I'm particularly excited because this week head chef Gosrick came out. And it does some cool changes, y'all. The ult has shifted as well. I don't know if you've used it yet. If you get it, it's a good time. Let me tell you what. Uh, let's just say it was inspired by my watching of the menu and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. So that is that is the energy that you should go in when you're going to pick it up. It's a great set. If you also don't have Gosrick, you can get a combo right now. It's a great deal. Gosrick would even believe so. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What I, it's, it's an interesting perfect. combination of things. There's a lot of I uh, well he's a chef and I watched the Is menu he? shortly before we had that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh huh. More so than that. Well, I'm not gonna give any spoilers. Uh, but we're gonna be um, doing uh, actually beyond that. I think those are all of our ad reads for today. So yep. we like to give a shout out to all those folks uh, once again, the Indiegogo uh, supporters. Thank you all so much. Um, and with that, I think I have to throw it to our whoosh captain. So tell us what happened previously on Rivals. It's me. Mm -hmm. Uh, cool. Thanks for that toss up of it to me. Um, yeah, we let's go. So on it today. I we are. You. We are. <laughs> really with it. Look, it's rainy, and I love was... you all, but it's cozy weather, and I'm in. Mm. I've got cozy brain. Yeah. So it was eighty me. something yesterday, and now like. Yeah, and now it's gonna snow tomorrow. Right. Absolutely terrific. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Love Chicago and climate change. It's not real. All right, everybody, get your whooshing apparatuses ready. <sighs> this brand new uh, whoosh coming to you live from a bar somewhere in Waterdeep. Ooh. Mm. Uh, previously on Rivals of Waterdeep. Whoosh. whoosh. Oh, and look at them go. What yeah. a Thank smart. you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. Heck yeah. The whooshes. Look at them go. All right, so the first time whooshers do. do. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Welcome we appreciate in, that. Thank you yeah. for joining us. You first whooshers. Um, yeah, well, our, our recaps now for the rest of the season are so much easier because we, because these episodes are so much more confusing that we have to actively take notes on them, but that means the recaps are great. <laughs> oh, I should have got those notes. Locked. Hold on. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So as soon like... as Latia started, I was like, oh, let me open them notes because I'm yeah. just going to read <laughs> for this recap. Well, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. <laughs> uh you want to start, start masood i was gonna say we could start from where we were all together where it's sort of yeah. Up, uh, yeah and then sort of move on from there yeah um yeah so you all uh all of us actually we were there at for sort of the xanathar melted shaka at this moment was sort of the coming xanathar terms. meltdown yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. standing in the refuge of uh this cavern like this dormant volcano now no longer under hostile threat like we were gathered around the corpse of our uh, uh big bad from the uh, the early half of the season um and it took some moments of conversation between uh dante virgil and Lairn about like sort of their care there was some exploration done by latia and uh Gazric about like how things were sort of situated in the Who's oh sorry dahani gosh darn it i really thought it wasn't gonna i was i was your one i felt so safe this week <laughs> i felt so safe this week and that it'll get you uh that's okay i don't know how i got there um but i i mean i guess i found a weird room or something right, right, right. just if anyone does art like anyone does fan art of the seasons, make sure like a where's Waldo to sneak one of us in the background of any art you do. <laughs> I also, I love the notion of like everything being hand drawn and just like a photoshopped image of our face, like really yeah. tiny <laughs> somewhere. In there. Uh, but Dahani went and explored and uh, sort of found what looked to be a coal furnace that was rather a cold furnace, um, somehow generating um, a lot of uh, like taking all the heat out of the space and putting it somewhere. It was, I believe, a combination of three forms of magic, uh, mm -hmm. one natural, one artifice, and one uh, Xanathar, if you would say. So a warlock energy of some kind uh, fused together to... And then we mm -hmm. left 
Lazarus alone with it. He you know, it. in hindsight, that may not have been <laughs> the best. He had just woken up from a good nap yep. and, you know, maybe he had a little bit of that nap hangover going. We probably you had, shouldn't have sent him in there by himself. You had all three pieces. You had a warlock with you with the, with the connections, and if I, I you had was, an artificer. I like I was like these are all the parts. If you wanted to do it safely, you said one in, and I said, kudos. <laughs> you know what? I will say though, like it's still on Gazrik to be yeah. like, hey, there are three elements Agreed. to this puzzle. Hey, uh, I'm only one. Maybe uh, I could come we, back outside and. Sure. And, you know, like we can assign blame for who maybe gave Gosrick what ideas. Never. How about that? As, as grander scheme DM Masood. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, saw, I saw an opportunity for a great bit. And I was like, oh, what if Gosrick? And to be out? fair, it was an excellent bit. <laughs> thank it you, was. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, before that, though, Shaka, you had a nothing really happened with you, right? Wow. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's, not, it's, that he, it's obvious... not that he was willing to share with us. <laughs> True. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just I just hung out, ate some burgers. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Taste yeah. burgers. There ate you go. Burgers. I always forget the name of those burgers I ate. During... I, did they have large? Oh, Mike, large they have large Michaels? Large Michaels, oh, Michaels. Yeah. Michaels on, on Schult? Yeah. yeah. Damn. Damn. Listen, that I mean, franchise I mean, the franchise. I mean, the franchise has expanded. Mm -hmm. The franchise has expanded to Schult. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, some, uh, I mean, basically, Shaka, you know, was, said going through some uh, traumatic things going on. Um, but uh, he is, uh, you know, uh, kind of opening up a shop and trying to trying to get it to work, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to get his uh, puzzle shop uh, uh, up to speed, um, I, I, I would say, in like the year or so period after. Um, and, you know, he's... Uh, Trying to be an entrepreneur, you know? yeah. Should mm -hmm. we maybe? Uh, should we maybe? Okay. So, is there anything else we want to say about that moment with the with the Xanathar down there? Shaka got a got a uh, yes. slightly concerning message, which comes to us. I know. Yeah. Was there any, you want? Oh, you want to talk about that? Yeah. So, like, so, like, this isn't something that Shaka necessarily shared with everybody, uh -huh. but he did sort of the you know the spirit, uh, uh, you can say, of the Xanathar kind of flowed through him. Oh. Um and kind of gave him a message. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know. Guys. I mean, that's fine. Um, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, there was like uh, do you guys remember playing the game Advent Rising? No, way back. No. We, we can talk about it later. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. And uh, they basically gave him the message that you know that like it's what you do with the power that matters. Yeah. Um. And Shaka finds out that there's some warlocks that have been actually, actually they they were not warlocks, just people, uh, regular people that were solving his puzzles and uh, getting powers. Yeah. Um. You know. So uh, he has to. I don't. I don't think he's necessarily made that connection yet. Um. But uh, when he does, uh, he's gonna have to figure out what to do with this this responsibility. All right. So we looked in on Shaka about a year after that incident with the with the Xanathar and like I said, puzzle shop and people are getting powers. If we rewind a little bit to uh, that was about a year later. So yeah. rewinding about 10 months to just about two months after uh, the incident with the Xanathar, Virgil and Kent are seen because uh, we're sort of doing a little snippets of time here and there so uh, about two months after the issue with uh, about the incident rather with uh, the xanathar virgil and kent ended up back in cara dune uh virgil well actually i don't know if i know this virgil whose choice was it to go visit the zor home it was virgil's choice okay. to accept the invitation um I, I think in those months of time multiple in, multiple invitations were sent and he finally said okay and <clears throat> um decided that we would go back and at least be nice and and Virgil, like it was just like look let's let me just be nice and accept the thing and dante was very nice and uh kent revealed that he was basically just nervous about having virgil there um that Lairn, um dante's son virgil's nephew hasn't really been out of his room or social since the incident um probably since losing that connection with the xanathar and being snapped out of it so really that was the ulterior motive is dante brought virgil there to try and 
connect or talk with Laren because Dante has been completely unsuccessful in doing so. And, um, and also because Dante was so very attentive on the flight back from Chult, he sourced ice spider stew. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Really, mm -hmm. it's really, it's really nice. Such um, jerk. So yeah, Virgil, Virgil basically is is trying to play nice, be nice, and keep Kent from getting too used to being in the lap of slight luxury. <laughs> yeah. Kent, meanwhile, is enjoying observing the lap of slight luxury <laughs> that apparently is uh my husband's birthright, but okay, that's fine. Um, what? Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all so of this, mostly all of this, wrap it up it's all mine. Of, that's right <laughs> just we'll take it uh thank you you can keep the ficus uh we <laughs> Kent was surprisingly sort of quiet like it was definitely a zoar family reunion moment so he tried to sort of keep out of the way which was all well and good until he kept out of the way and was on his own and started hearing a voice uh, which was super, totally, absolutely, 100% fine. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's just that uh, the Graz soul trinket that Kent has from about five seasons ago uh, started talking to him. And apparently it is this little sliver of Graz uh, and potentially the slivers of all the other souls that he's wearing, it's fine, uh, have decided to start giving Kent these, uh, what, what we've been thinking of as bardic powers. Um, so that's probably fine. Uh, Got to figure out what we're going to do about that. But for now, basically, Kent knows that uh, that his his soul trinkets are being chatty and they have something to do with the new magic that he can do. Uh, so that was Kent and Virgil. We rewind even a little further. Uh, that was two months after the Xanathar incident, but a mere two days after the Xanathar incident, uh, we got to zoom in on Selyse a little. You wanna you wanna tell us what happened there? Oh, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, I was just like, oh god, what happened? It's been two weeks. <laughs> uh, Selyse was vulnerable in a moment with the what? What did we say it was one way to a glass? And you all were we weren't honestly sure how uh, how that mirror worked, and I don't want to go into it. <laughs> I don't know how it worked either. It was just, it was there and you could observe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Sleese had her say. And then when Faye didn't seem to really care, give a shit, Sleese dimension doored her 300 feet down. Good luck. <laughs> Where that led her, I still haven't made up my mind yet. Mm -hmm. Well, she a might be for a, another day. <laughs> mm -hmm. She might be part of a rock. I don't know. Maybe so. Ooh, it's, it's someone's mystery in the next it's five minutes. It's not the but, worst. You know, not Let me tell you well, what. not necessarily. It could mm. be. Never mind. That joke's bad. Mm. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Are we? Are we done? Are we, Almost. Are we, we have one more little short rewind. Uh, mm. Just about two days before the Salise incident, right before we left Chult. Uh, Dahani yeah. had an opportunity to chat a little bit with uh, who I've come to understand really is is simply her bosom buddy, her most longest <laughs> pal, her closest bosom confidant, mm -hmm. uh, Walter. Mm -hmm. the, they're the number one murder birds, you know. How the they're, both, they're not, both of them are the number one. <laughs> they're not though. I mean, if it really came down to it, Walter would be quite disappointed and probably dead. But we're not going to get into that. Uh, no, there's still time this week. <laughs> Uh, no, shortly after we came out of the volcano, um, the honey was uh, met by, um, I guess you could call them an envoy from Kirsabal, um, which featured Kevin the seagull. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which is extremely important to put in the notes. But no, the the, the uh, monastery of, of, of Eric Ogre on Kirsabal did in fact notice that, hey, there's a volcano not too far from here that's not volcanoing. We should probably do something about that. But they got there just as we fixed the problem. And everything was okay. And Dahani decided that, like, she would come back in a couple of months mm -hmm. to see if things had kind of evened out with the uh, environment and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, no, we're just having a good old chat about what murder birding means to Walter. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, Walter. Mm -hmm. 
All right. And with that, we're going to kind of bounce around and see what you all are up to. Hey. Um, I'd actually like to start with Kent and Virgil. All right. So it's been a few days since you've been visiting home, Virgil. And Kent, you have been... Well, how, tell, tell us, how are you feeling after your conversation with Grotz? Mm. <laughs> um, oh, okay. How, so for the... What are the captions... <laughs> I need to know how the captions got that. I don't. I don't think they I don't did think that they time. Did. That, is, yeah. that is simply untranslatable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. So, yeah. I. You know. I think after a couple of days, I think Kent would be at a point where, like, he recognizes that he has, like, ultimately that his soul trinkets can't hurt him. Right. Uh, he thinks he's pretty sure. He's moderately sure. Maybe uh, psychic damage. But and know. so, yeah. Well. <laughs> Uh, yes, but a, but a poorly placed in. pun can can you know do psychic damage to Ken. Mm -hmm. Uh so so yeah, after a couple of days, I think I think he is uh still reluctant to like like he's very careful about what he says and how much intent he puts behind it, because he's still a little reluctant to let that magic out now that he knows where it's coming from. But mm -hmm. uh I'm beginning to sort of I've not had another conversation with Grotz. I imagine he has tried to talk to me, but Oh yeah. Talking to him feels a little dangerous at this point. Uh, so I haven't had another conversation with him, but I do feel like I'm just starting to like test the bounds of like, okay, well, if I do a little tiny bit of magic, like do I lose control? Does he talk louder? Do I whatever? So it's, it's a little, it's yeah, it's toddler pushing the boundaries experimentation kind of thing right now for Kent. Okay. In those couple of days since uh, your, your experience with Graz and Virgil, your, discussion with your brother and trying to get through to your nephew we find you in the very nice suite that you two have been given for your visit and it's the night before you were planning to go back to Waterdeep for whatever reasons have you two talked about kind of where to go after this and what have you Decided because you're kind of reconnecting with your family. Kent, you're feeling a way about your magic right now, considering yeah. one of the sources. What is it that you want to settle down and do? I mean, for for me, the very first question is like, do you feel uh who what's the word? Because happy with is is probably incorrect, regardless. Uh, do you feel satisfied i suppose with where things are with lairn and the rest of your family and here because i well because that's what's important right now and i'm i'm not gestures at soul trinkets in a huge hurry to go anywhere uh <laughs> if if you need more time um i think in the time that we have been here virgil has tried to talk to Lairn and Lairn has basically refused contact not answered so um since we are headed back Virgil is essentially going to force the force the conversation before they go um so I th um he would say to Ken I'm content with how the visit has gone it's been a while it's been strange to be here but it seems like you know, I I feel bad that I left Dante to sort of this fate, but it seems like he's sort of accepted it. But I I would like to try to help with what's going on with his son. Um, so perhaps if we can at least stay until that's done. But I assume that we would simply go back to Waterdeep. What after if, this? What if we brought Laren with us? Maybe, maybe Laren is feeling the way you did and needs to get out. Well, and it doesn't have to be, I mean, we certainly don't have to tell Dante that it's permanent or Laren that it's permanent, but maybe it's a visit. Well, if he stops being a little shit for five minutes, perhaps I'll extend the invitation. <laughs> 
had a very, uh, Kent says, I had a very unkind joke about one of our other friends always being a little shit and them still being allowed to hang out with us, but I'll keep it to myself for now. That's right. I'm not telling you all who he was thinking about. Oh. <laughs> no, it's it's just like Dragon Age Inquisition. Celise greatly approves, even though she's no one. <laughs> and when when we get back to Water Deep, are you gonna cover the mirrors at home too, or is this just a visiting thing? Uh, well, <laughs> have we? Okay. I know we said in at the end of last episode, two days ago, we were we like we were going upstairs to have this conversation. But I suppose we should have a little moment of it now where we can at least assume that I have now told you that I'm hearing voices uh, from my trinkets. And uh, definitely like you could ask me about the mirror because it definitely has nothing to do with the mirrors. Right. Uh, <laughs> but but Ken is like, yeah. I don't, right. Exactly. Like, yeah, Them discussing the voices or hearing hearing things right. or being told things in, at, like in his sleep. That was normal for right. Virgil to know. But learning that they are coming in a different way. Yeah. Was a slight concern. But did, uh, Kent, did Kent assure Virgil that that he sort of had it under control? Oh, absolutely I, see, I, I not. Would have, okay. I would have figured <laughs> Kent would have put it off as long as he could before he actually had the conversation. Well, the thing was, he was so I was so jumpy, though, because they kept whispering at the most inopportune moments. So it was kind of hard, to, kind of hard to keep from uh, from Virgil. So so that but but in that case, right, because I felt forced to tell him, I think I, it was all just it all came out and so no there was no reassurance that i have this under control whatsoever <laughs> so mirrors you two were talking about them please go ahead yeah uh no, no i mean i think i just i mean you know how hard it has been for me to you know not have any looking glasses throughout the day for the last two days uh and I, you know, I think maybe I overreacted and, and, you know, honestly, maybe, maybe seeing them will help me figure it out. So no, we can uncover the mirrors at Troll Skull. Okay. I mean, we can maybe talk to somebody about some kind of warding or something. Maybe that might help. Well, honestly, that was sort of my other reason for, you know, if you felt done here, bringing Lairn, heading back to Waterdeep because... Uh, listen, it's nice to be back home, but it's not exactly the epicenter of magical research here in Caradun, just outside the Snowflake Mountains in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so yes, I think that's another, another thing on the list, uh, is just finding, I mean, I don't know who, you know, this feels, it's not, we have so, we know so many artificers in Waterdeep, but I, it doesn't feel like artifice. We, we do know a lot. Yeah, we do. Well, they're. There might be better resources there, and I will ignore the fact that you basically just called me a bumpkin. I didn't. I have to. Oh, they're talking to me. I gotta go. <laughs> that no. Oh, mm, you did not pull the Phoenix and Scott shit on me. No, you did not. Okay. <laughs> um, so Virgil will let that go. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, um, his plan is if Laren, if Laren is going to be either approachable or Virgil will kind of force it and and he'll probably extend the invite to say, you know, pack your stuff. Let's go. Do you want to go ask Laren? Yeah, let's find out if he's being a little shit today. OK, <laughs> uh, quick out of character thing. Did Laren have an accent or anything? Uh, no. no. Uh, OK, good. He was just he was just like a. <laughs> Yeah, he's just, like a young guy, just a little young, a little obnoxious. Stop. No, that's an accent. Stop it. That's Don't. is that the he's accent? Little, no, he's a little guy. <laughs> he's just a little guy. Oh my gosh! Stop it. <laughs> so if he sounds um, obnoxious. Uh, okay. I mean, I can do that easily. Wait. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, Virgil, would you like to go talk to your nephew? Uh, yeah, Virgil goes to Laren's room and knocks. He has been doing this, and Laren has never come to the door before. So Virgil has been attempting to knock and doesn't expect him to answer this time either who is it um at that virgil misty steps into the into the room you couldn't just answer it's been the same person knocking for the past several times who do you think it was 
I don't know. It could have been dad. It could have been a servant. The your husband. I don't know. <laughs> Almost taking a like like the way the husband came out. I was like, okay, oh, yeah, you know, he's just being an ass. Got it. Um, no, he he wasn't like he's, sure. He was he's, like he was like he's just yeah. He's just like grasping. Yeah. yeah. Um, like partner, husband, not sure. Like where? I've just wanted to check in with you and talk with you. A lot of stuff happened a few months ago, and it's not healthy for you to keep it all inside. Believe me, I know. Okay, why do you even care? You've been gone my whole life. Okay, maybe this is a little bit about me and how my choices led everyone to be where they are. But that doesn't mean that I can't stop and try to make things right. And how are you going to do that? Dad keeps me locked up in here like I'm going to set everything on fire. You know, the minute his back is turned, what, what are you going to do for me? I mean, considering Chult may be a bad choice of words. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I didn't set Chult on fire. Just, mm, well, mm, okay. <clears throat> Look, he's so being he's obnoxious using literally, to me. Yeah, using yeah, literally yeah. all of his 19 charisma to get through this conversation. Okay. <laughs> you could, you um, know what? You can have a conflict with the nephew. <laughs> there. Um, regardless of what happened then, that doesn't have to define who you are forever. And I want you to know that if you are Willing to take a chance at a different life, perhaps some new experiences. I would like to invite you to leave here. I will either check it with Dante or I won't and come back with us to Waterdeep. Dad put you up to this, didn't he? Your dad has never been able to put me up to anything his entire life. No. What do I get out of it? You get out of here. What do you expect me to do if I go with you? What do you want to do? I don't know. No one ever lets me do anything. I'm always, I'm always underfoot. No one seems to want me around. I would say that your father is coming around to realizing his mistakes so i apologize that the scions of the family are both realizing a lot of things wrong but perhaps the change of scene perhaps some new opportunities and new experiences you might be able to decide what you want to do with the freedom so long as it doesn't hurt anyone to do it What do you get out of this? A border. Like this, like that, that's up. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, wow. Misu, Misu, thanks, did we thanks, say Simple. roughly, what, uh, what are we, 1920 ish for? Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. It's like okay. 17 to 19, like pretty. Okay. Um, you know, you are certainly old enough to make your decisions. I would hope that they are good and healthy ones but obviously this is not a place for you to decide what you want to do next look and and he gets real serious on you real quick whenever dad has tried to talk to him like this it's always been a trick i need you to understand that it's not always simple to just say yes i get that and i am not trying to trick you i am not trying to charm you i am simply realizing that if not for choices i made i might found myself in the same place you are and if I can help you get out of that place, then 
it won't balance any cosmic scales, but it would do a good sight towards giving you a better and different life. Mm. All right. One thing, though. We don't tell Dad. I'll just send him a note once I get to Waterdeep. Well, that would be communicating with him, so he'd probably be happy with that. And if he's not, I won't be there. I have learned the wisdom of leaving a note, so... Pack what you'll need. All right, when do we leave? Some undetermined time in the near future, because I didn't think this far through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Two more days. Um, Two more days. We, yes, we. I have asked. I have asked Rival to come back for us in a few days' time, and that's when we'll leave. And the rest of your friends are going to be fine with this. We tend to bring each other several surprises that we adapt to reasonably quickly, so you might be surprised. All right, just that, that lady with the sword, I don't know, because her and that dog, man. The dog's fine. Trust me, if you, if you, you just be nice to the dog. The dog knows good people. Has the dog actually actively mauled you? He looks down. It's also not. It's also not a dog. But you know, we'll get to that later. I'm sorry, not a dog. Well, it's um, it's a dire wolf. So once again, do you have all? Yeah, you got all your fingers. There's no bite marks on you. You have a dire wolf. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Chances are, you'll be fine. As, as I said, we're, perhaps we'll discuss, magic. We may talk about family history. I may have some funny stories about your dad, but at the very mm. least, you'll have choices that you don't have here. Mm, just give me all the embarrassing stories. Done. Somewhere mm. across the Zor household, <laughs> Kent is like, oh, I'm going to tell you some stories about somebody <laughs> in your family, but it ain't going to be your dad. And he kind of leans <laughs> in and says, don't listen to anything Kent has to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like no i i want to learn more how did you meet this guy anyway and and we can you can either explain or we can kind of fade he starts in as, as we fade out he starts explaining well do you know why your dad had to take over the family and that yeah wow. <laughs> and as we uh fade away from kent and virgil for now uh let's actually go to dahani me and uh, Masood, I'm definitely recruiting you for this moment. As you said, it's it's been about two months, no more, since Chult incident. And you finally are sitting down with Walter to have that kind of come to Lathander tier deity of choice talk with him about this whole murder burb and him shadowing you, kind of trying to be you. Uh, and, uh, well, yeah, well, Walter, have a have a seat. Okay. <laughs> and this this is why Masood is voicing <laughs> Walter. Uh, yeah. So I asked you like a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I came to cast came to Castle Lantern's house. I came and asked you like why you were here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what what did you tell me? Can you please remind me what you said? Sure, absolutely. Um. Well, I basically said you are the only person who really like left Schult. Like the only people you're the only one that people talk about about leaving Schult and like doing other stuff. And so I wanted to go out and make my name for myself because I kind of got forgotten about on Schult a lot. Like people would, like didn't really mm -hmm. notice me. No idea why. Um. And so I ended up coming up up over here, kind of figuring my own way. Got a good job, been there for a little bit. Um, and then I we had that conversation about like doing my own thing. Um, mm -hmm. and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do my own thing. What would that be? Um, and the last time I made a real big decision for myself was when I decided to follow what you were doing. So I was like, Oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna do my own thing, I'm gonna be my own murder bird. Uh, and, uh, you know, I met up with Rival, and there was a real moment for justice, an overlooked part of, uh, Waterdeep that needed some protecting, um, 
And, uh, you know, I, I figured you all were busy in the North Ward, but uh, there's still some, like, your neighbors just a little north. You all could have had a... Someone else could fill in. Um, and so we did. Well, Pierre. Yeah? Did you realize how both of the things that you did are still things that I've done and not things that, like, you yourself have, like... You're still following me. Mm. But I, I, I am not you. And therefore no. you did not do the the thing in the the field ward. I that was that I, I did that. That was my, my thing, right? Yes. But did you really think like you murdered a lot of people? Well, they were bad people. Were they? Yeah. Are you yeah. sure? Well, yeah. I want to I'm going to make the first freaking roll of this game <laughs> to make an insight check. I don't think he thinks he didn't think like this D &D. through. Just... Right. This is D&D. Oh, yeah. Rolling. I haven't asked him my roll a single thing. Well, is it? Oh, well. <laughs> well, well, Masood, that's a natural 20. How does, is, does Walter think this through? Absolutely oh, no. not. A hundred percent. Your insight gains you a uh, quite a bit of into Walter. Um, Walter has never had a true original thought in his life because he's never had the ability to really just think for himself. A lot of his existence has been formulated on like following certain tracks and paths, therefore achieving a certain level of success in some way, shape or form. And so when he had to think for himself, he's just like, oh, it's like that. I, it's, it's the person who's always following some someone's like methodology. Very easy to get into a pyramid scheme. Hasn't happened yet, but like, that is like <sighs> Walter's energy in this moment of like, well, I, and I think it's a deeper insecurity of his own of like, of course. I, I deeply just don't feel enough. And if I do this, maybe I will be enough. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you get, you get all that in your 20, just looking at him and he's like, yeah. I'm going to put my, my, my hand on Walter's shoulder. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to say, Walter, look me in the eyes right now and tell me that you really thought that those people like look, look me in the eye and tell me that you really thought this through look into my gorgeous golden orbs and tell me that you thought that was you re, you thought that through methodically you didn't st you, you you stopped to ask people what was going on uh -huh. you, you followed through with with you know intel and reconnaissance yeah. and well, well we we saw that uh rival had been doing reconnaissance and i joined them on a mission where we saw rival, people being rival taken. Did the reconnaissance yes yeah yeah absolutely and 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 they were like hey we should do something uh and i said okay um rival seems pretty good and and smart and um uh, so i hopped on the guns um and uh rival said to shoot them and so i did and there are, and rival was like, oh, they're bad people because they're taking those people. And I was like, oh, and that makes sense. And I never. Go on, g g go, 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 go. Yes. Finish, finish the sentence. Finish I, the sentence. I didn't check for myself. And I trusted a computer system that is currently developing its own level of morality. Uh, oh. Oh, I'm... I'm just a murderer. Ooh. Like, I know birds have pretty, like, unexpressive face. Like, like they, they don't make a lot of facial expressions. Yeah. But something happens on Dahani's face that is like halfway between like la like a sad laugh and like just there's something going on there, Walter. Yeah. This is what I mean. And and like let's 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 walk back from the oh I'm a murderer part for a second. Let's just walk okay. back from that. Okay. What happened was you trusted other people. To make choices for you instead of making your own choices. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I've always kind of done that. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, uh, how do I make my own choices? 
I guess I actually can't ask you that, right? I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta figure that myself. There you go. Oh, this is hard. Oh God. Well, do you this see really now? Tough. Yeah, no, it's really tough. Like Jeez. you think I? You, do you think that when I left Chult that I was just like, oh, I'm gonna go do a thing and it's gonna be the easiest thing in the world? No, I had to figure out how I was gonna get from point A to point B. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, that was that was years of of figuring out where to go, what to do, like the right people to trust, the wrong people to trust. Like uh-huh. I had to figure that. Like, and I had to do that. For myself. Yeah. And you, you're a great bird, Voltaire. Like you, you you got you got heart, kid. And she actually does like punch him, like punch him father like in the shoulder. Um it oh. it does it I knew you were gonna do that. It's a, I've got brittle bones. You you're in <laughs> They're hollow, they make it easier to fly. You know this. I didn't hit you that hard. <laughs> But yeah, you've got to figure that out for yourself. I mean, you, you did well. And I mean, thankfully, yeah. the choices that I made on my way here were most were mostly good. Yeah. And that you didn't run into a lot of trouble because you were kind of doing the same thing I did. But like now, you, you like you gotta figure out your own way of thinking. Huh. Okay. Okay, I'll have to. Think about that and what that means for me. Um, ooh. Well, I guess, I, should I start with what makes me happy? Yeah, what is that actually? I did like murdering people. Like I did, I was happy doing that. There was something like, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for the right cause. Okay, there I'm we using go. using my time in the right way. Die, okay, so rebel scum. Like, there stop. was something that felt good about that. Let's He's try. A <laughs> He's a stone trooper. It's not, not having an are we the baddies moment over here. Not that. <laughs> what? He's, a, he's a total storm trooper. Oh, my God. It felt, cool. it felt nice to have power, you know? That was cool. Can we, can we take a step back from die, rebel scum to maybe die, monster, you don't belong in this world? Hmm. Okay. But like, you know what? What makes a monster? Oh boy, because that's something uh, to think about. You know, that is. You know what? That you know what? This is opening up further levels of thought for you. Absolutely. And this is really gonna have to. I mean, feel free to use my story as a guideline, but do not copy my story. No, 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 no. Walter is thinking for himself now. I yeah. will find my own path. And one thing I will always do is make sure that I am punching up. I swear that. Excellent. Always punch up, never punch down. Right. Against the establishment, against those in charge, those who would abuse their power. Like the masked mm-hmm. lords. Right, a shadow or- organization that just like pulls strings in the background with no visibility or accountability. Oh, Tahani, thank you. I know what my new purpose is. I will awesome. I will hey. shed light on all the masked lords because Hylock and I have been talking about it. They've been like yeah. imposing and like putting restrictions on him. And and he doesn't complain. He just does his job. But mm-hmm. I look at such a hardworking dude and I'm mm-hmm. like, you should just be able to. Yeah. No, no, no. Thank you, Tahani. Thank you so I... much. This is I, I feel and like I have as... such a purpose. And as Walter has found his purpose in hunting down the mass swords, we're going to fade to black. And does Dahani just like <laughs> Dahani is like has created a curtain around herself with her wings? <laughs> she, was, she was gonna ask him if if he wanted to come with her when she went back to Chult. He was she was just gonna make so many really good advancements, but Masood is just too good. <laughs> Not even wow. Walter. Masood is just too good. <laughs> well, I. I'm okay. You know with what? <laughs> well, well, now you have another enemy. Good job, Mass Lords. Um, <laughs> but speaking of the Mass Lords, mm-hmm. let's let's go to a little bit in the future where everyone is back in Waterdeep, at least for now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laren has come with you. Uh, tell us, Virgil, has Laren acted right or is he still being a petulant child? He 
interestingly enough, he was doing he was doing the affectation of the sullen like teen. You know, he he was like talking about um, how the flight on Rival was bumpy, which Rival took offense to. You know, he was like, <laughs> "Oh, this is where you live. It's okay, I guess." Even though it's you know Troll Skull Manor, we gave him a nice room, and he kind of like scoffed at it. So Virgil has been accepting all of this in stride. <clears throat> um, but then when he came down and had one of Leaf's meals, um, he actually like could not hold himself back from, from like smiling about it. And oh. Virgil's, Virgil's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, does he keep up the affectation after the good meal though? I'm asking he sna he snaps, he snaps right back. He snaps right back into it. He's, 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 he's now not holding it up as convincingly, but yeah. Sonic um, a little bit longer than some cracks. Yeah, yeah it's just it's gonna take more than one meal though. Mm -hmm. Um, since that one meal and you treating him well and giving him great hospitality has not worked. In the time since you've gone back, <laughs> Laren has been sent to work with the biddies. Laren, you look. up. You got to make cookies. Okay? I love that the, the biddies are like the re like <laughs> the, the, like you the need rehab. to get back on your feet, like do things right. Like, I mean, if Bruh's still there, yeah. <laughs> see, Bruh's your object lesson. Like, don't be like Bruh. Bruh's handling the <laughs> orientation now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you've recently been a warlock, a uh, Xanathar warlock. Let's talk about it. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, buddy. Um, okay then. Um, but. It's it's a beautiful day in, in Waterdeep. I'm not going to start singing that. Um, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. The That's all you get. I have it on record. I actually have a Mr. Rogers. Oh my we'll, God. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. Um, and you all have decided to gather and kind of go check on the North Ward. And at, you've picked up Laren from the biddies. He's he's doing his sulky thing. It's not very at this point. He's just really doing it just to annoy you, Virgil. He doesn't believe this anymore. And it doesn't like like Virgil gets it. It totally yeah. doesn't. But he lets like he gives basically he gives Laren as much as he needs to believe that he can pretend to play this thing for as long as he needs to. <laughs> and on the way, you hear a voice ringing out from. A temple that none of you have managed to notice in all this time between your comings and goings. And there is someone with a bell in one hand and a collection plate in the other going, we must rebuild Waterdeep. I, I beg you, patrons, residences of the North Ward, I, I humbly come to you in service of and he rattles off like every deity very quickly. <laughs> he doesn't even give you one good deity. He just he just rattles them all off like deity of your choice. Mm -hmm. but, Is... but you have seen the destruction in our town. Now keep in mind, y'all have had this fixed for a while. He's just right. really. I was going to say, it's duo with us. Just... Did... Oh, sorry, yeah, Masood first. Oh, yeah. Oh no, actually, no. I duo's behind. back I... at Troll Skull. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, Virgil. I have a backstage question I'm going to throw in later. Um, did he say yes. corruption? Uh, he didn't, but now he did. Oh, okay. I thought I, <laughs> I, thought I heard something with a C and an unction. Yeah. Uh, I tried to say destruction. I might have slurred it. Destruction. destruction. Sorry, that, destruction. destruction. Okay, but that's no, okay. No, that's okay. Now, now you've said corruption. We just go run with it. Uh, um, the corruption and destruction of those that you uh, let, let lead. I beseech thee. Anyone passing by whose words fall upon your ears, please help rebuild Waterdeep. I can't do the good preacher voice. I'm sorry. No, you're doing a great job. Uh, what kind of does, does he have? Does he have a crowd? Does he have? Um... He's 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 attracting a crowd, and he's not within sight of the fountain. But Water Davians know of the fountain. So, but some people are still going to kind of come and see what he's talking about mm -hmm. um <laughs> guys that his i don't know i know i was gone for a little bit but i felt like nimrods was still operating our community service division in terms about development opportunities it, it felt like we've been really fixing a lot of potholes and like maintaining a lot of like the infrastructure this is new to me have you has this guy been around for a little bit no. Oh, this also Lee really? says you see her reaching for a sword. <laughs> I mean, we I mean we like we have the blessing of, of Laurel. Yeah. We have these fountains. 
Uh, we've been not causing too much chaos, but maybe there's something we overlooked, or maybe this is just some kind of a uh, scam. And you hear him again. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you for these blessings. We will rebuild Waterdeep with your help. But who would use Virgil. the name of gods to <laughs> trick people <laughs> for money? Yeah. I know. It's unheard so of. He just holds up a mirror out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> has, uh, he, has he said the name of a deity? He mumbled he rattled them all up. Oh, like it was, he it rattled was them like, all very, very, very <laughs> fragilistic, but for deities, apparently. Yeah. Like mm. Thander, Tyr, and whoever else. Um, mm. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, you can see, like, Virgil kind of putting his head in his hands because this is this is very much a, a scam. Like, his father would have run back in the day. Um, he puts an arm around Kent's waist and... Um, Activates his radiant soul and takes off into the air. So, like full wings out. Wow! Oh, you just hear Cosmic. And <laughs> like you just you just like see, whoosh, and then he lands right next to this preacher oh, my. person, and and says, "People of the North Ward, if what he says is true, you certainly know who to ask for help." And he also, this is just, this is just full meta flavoring. Now he puts a hand out and kind of casts gust through the crowd to part them a little bit. No, not the Moses. <laughs> to I indicate, wanna... to indicate the yeah. fountain in the distance. Right. If, Can... if, you know, if what we have already helped provide does not provide for the North ward, by all means, let us know. And he looks to the preacher who, whose name he will not even ask. So that you don't even got to worry about that, Tanya. What <laughs> wow. exactly are you going to do to help? Can I say wow again from the guy? <laughs> <laughs> like, and like to give uh, Brian help on a whatever performance check this is in this space of like. I wasn't going to make him performance check, but you know what? Yes. Just... I mean, I guess we're playing D and D, so. <laughs> I was like, I'm I'm aiding this. This is brilliant. Let me assist in whatever way I can. <laughs> you can you can aid in that. You can do a performance to aid, but I figured this is just this is a very Virgil thing to do. And at level 20, he basically looks like an angel coming to descend upon this dude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, are you holding like how are you holding Kit? I need to understand this. Is this oh, like Superman? No, like no, it was no, it was because he's essentially he's doing it. Both of us are flying. Right. So Kent, Kent is actually oh. having fly. So I'm not actually carrying Kent. It's more right. of if we're going to do this, we're doing it as the first husbands yeah. of uh, the North Ward. Because yeah. how fucking dare you? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm reserving my response to see what he says to Virgil. So, uh, and funny you should say that he he drops the cowl and just kind of stares at Virgil like, "And whomst are you?" Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh he said whomst. Do you, do you not see the way? Okay. <laughs> that's nice uh, it's, uh, it's quite obvious oh, oh yeah go ahead donnie no i was gonna say um so he's just he's kind of like distracted by kent and virgil being up in the air does he have like a hat or, or a collection tin somewhere oh, near yeah okay what's in it um he's like, put it like, down mm -hmm. like is so, it is it like gold pieces or is it like it's copper, silver, like small. It's, small change. it's a little bit of everything. Somebody threw like a watch in there, which I don't know why you'd have a watch, but they threw a watch in there. Uh, there's like a Come random. Device, sir. Bless. Right. Like, oh, it's that Cal Lockwise. Got it. Uh... Yeah, 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 Mr. Cal Lockwise. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. But yeah, there's like random stuff. There's not a lot. The people of the North Ward are doing better with the mm -hmm. fountain and everything, but nobody's giving up gold to this dude. Like, if there's okay. a gold piece, you'd have to sift in that hat to look for one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just pop invisible for a second. Take oh, it. Boy. Are you sleight of handing it? Is there anything you need to roll to go invisible? Uh, there's nothing I need to roll to go invisible, but it will not become invisible with me, so I would need to roll for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, give me a sleight of hand roll, and then uh, Virgil and Kent, what are you doing with this whomst are the attitude? Uh, so this is a great opportunity with the whomster the for uh, Kent, who has, you know, had some time to 
even out his personality in these moments uh, to just totally left turn the whole gathering uh, and sort of say, oh, my apologies. It seems you must be new to Waterdeep. Listen, we appreciate all it is that you want to do for this town, but I think perhaps maybe you need a bit of a history lesson. We wouldn't want you to proceed without knowing exactly what has been going on here in Waterdeep. So let me tell, and now he turns to the crowd. So why don't we tell the tale of the origins of the Fountain of Troll Skull? And I will start to something that I have sort of been practicing and like on the trip with Laren all that time ago, like I told a lot of stories about Virgil, right? And I've been, there have been times where like kids come around the manor that maybe I tell much edited versions of some of like maybe of the time we were at the carnival because with certain edits that's a kid friendly enough story uh so like there have been these stories about the rivals that kent has been sort of experimenting with uh and this one being one of the the sort of most recent and most iconic uh is one that he's told many times and so he goes into this recitation of you know, the trouble and the fountain and how it came to be and the space and all the things. As, uh, yeah. as Kent does that, Virgil, Virgil like takes his hand off of Kent, leaving Kent still like flying mm. in midair and mm. and floats down next to this person. Charlatan. <laughs> I was going to say charlatan, but, you know, I'll say it. <laughs> he did. Jag off. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Yes, this uh, charlatan. You because know. now Kent's telling a story and Virgil's like, oh, give him a stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, your charlatan is just kind of looking puffed up like he's caught out and he knows it. And with that not great role to Hani, he absolutely feels the hat being trying to be moved away from him. And I, he reaches down to grab it. I was going to say, if if you would let me kind of Met, like narrate how I fumble this mm. like and and we we can we can talk about this um but like now that Kent is up in the sky telling a story and Virgil has kind of like come back to the ground I wanted to like grab it away too quickly and literally just throw all the money all over the place go for it oh, wow. you know what go for it yeah, so so here's what like that's exactly how it happens. Like I'm invisible, so there's no real kind of like you can't he he, he can't figure out how it happened, right? He just sees the hat get taken away from or the the collection tin, whatever it is, gets taken away too quickly, and literally everything that he has collected just gets thrust back into the crowd, like money and watches and like an earring goes flying into the crowd of people as kent is like narrating in the sky and virgil is majestically flying back yes. flying down back to earth and i and, move out of the way and he just you did and he just looks at kent or at virgil what did you do surprisingly this time nothing just like apparently you have well and he he just he needs someone to come in and go Ooh. <laughs> yeah can uh, just mid like the, the and then we happened. returned to our home the city of Ooh, city of water <laughs> <laughs> um he he just gets so angry well you can't have been doing that much look at these people giving money to fix what you haven't done Did, hmm. it, did, did we at least get veins popping on the neck or forehead? Oh, yeah. Because, oh, okay, yeah. that then Virgil he's considers full, it a success. He's on good. full. He knows he's caught. <laughs> he's trying to bluster his way out. So basically, he knows the 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 donations are lost. He's trying to bluster out of it and not get an ass whooping. Um, how many faces in the crowd do we recognize, give or take? I'm going to roll a d12. Mm -hmm. Yay! 11. Oh, okay. Um. So Virgil makes eye contact with them and he he kind of he 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 like he kind of makes eye contact. He does like the band director making eye contact, dresses a few by name. Gosrick. Yes. I I feel as though we haven't had any requests for Nimrod. Is it Rhodes or Rhodes? Rhodes? Nimrods? 
The pronunciation can differ depending on uh, the person, but Nimrods, honestly, Nim is kind okay. of how... Yeah. That sounds, yeah. A little, it sounds a little insulting, but it's okay. Sure. Um, sure. Have we had any requests for help outside of the standard from, from Nimrods? And, and he looks around the crowd like, y'all know who to ask. So, mm -hmm. Gosrick? Uh, no, from my knowledge, all uh, maintenance requests and uh, sort of the work has been done. We just did uh, a lot of recobbling on some of these cobblestones uh, a few blocks over, sort of taking care of that. Um, there was a tree that we needed to replant because it was sprouting some roots in the mandal of uh, the City of the Dead. But we all did right, that. All right, all right, all right. You, you can <laughs> tell the whole story. You hear one of the biddies from <gasps> the background. You don't need to tell the whole list, lad. Speaking of telling the whole list, I wasn't done. <laughs> oh, you, you keep talking. You, you All know, right, thank lovely. you. Uh, so at that point, we've gotten <laughs> we've gotten to the point where Laryl turned Virgil and Kent into cats. Uh, and so oh, I, mil he great. is milking this part. He is so absolutely I, milking this part. Well, I'm hoping to put the final nail in this charlatan's coffin here. Uh, and so what I will do is as I get to this part, I will very dramatically. And then the mighty Laryl Silverhand, daughter of Mistra, chosen of the goddess of magic, put an incantation on the two of us. And I will, as this is coming out and transformed us and little silver begins to come out. Uh, and I'm going to cast Silent Image, and I'm going to put an illusion of a cat head on top of Charlatan's face. Wait. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's an illusion. I'm just smoking it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. Uh, and I will continue there, but, you know, in, in sort of the hopes of uh, now any remaining people who are even thinking about listening to this fool just start laughing or something. I don't know. I just need him out of the picture. I don't like him and I'm trying not to be violent about it. Um, so he, because he's a charlatan, he thinks when he sees himself as a cat, he is now a cat because he's not right. <laughs> and he starts meowing and like grabbing his throat. Oh, poor buddy. <laughs> He's not bright, dude. I feel bad, except none of us have yeah. resorted to violence yet. So, yeah. like, <laughs> um, he like looks for his hat and grabs it and runs away, thinking he's been bewitched. Oh, great! That's fair. We because continue he... to clean up water, dude. Yes, and you you have had your great moment. Laren has seen magic in action that is both funny and beneficial, and you know, frankly, really badass from his uncle. So. Oh, yeah. So yeah, just another day in in Waterdeep for all of you to have shenaniganry. It really is. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> wow, <it's laughs> Um and you know, it it gives you more tales to tell the tavern later. The biddies uh promise to bring you cookies for that for that act of bravery except for Shaka. Mm -hmm. But speaking of Shaka, look. They still don't they're still they the biddy farm does not forget the attempts to take the cookies farm okay i, I, I can tupperware like no and no, i and i i'm I loving get, this I get, council coalition a bit like let's go like <laughs> bitty farm remembers <laughs> bitty farm remembers oh farm thanks, remembers. i hate it <laughs> but speaking of shaka we're actually going to go far in the future for you Ooh. Yeah. and you know imagine a nice house the the sitting room the parlors you were and an elder tiefling is sitting in a rocking chair surrounded by little tieflings um some adult children tieflings and he's telling the story of how he met his wife i believe that would be your second wife wouldn't it because yes, didn't you it... leave a wife behind when you met what's his face is that you asking or one of the kids asking? I'm asking. I'm asking oh, okay. the part about this, this will be your second wife, correct? I was like, how dare you? Um, I mean, yes, sassy we, kids. We can, sassy we can kids. say that for sure. I'd be like, how dare you? Have you <laughs> oh met the god. children of Waterdeep? <laughs> That's the other mommy. Oh my god. Oh my um, god. Please tell these grandchildren how you met their mom. Okay. Uh, so so I'm so so I'm trying to trying to. Uh, well, I'm sitting back in, I guess what you could say is like a rocking chair, I guess. Um, you know, I have a, a really big beard. I mean, I'm talking like almost Santa style 
beard, you know what I'm saying? A big gray beard. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I have kind of looks similar to what I would wear, except it's like a full on kind of comfy robe. So like imagine Shaka's like normal white uh, cloak, except it's like a big comfy robe. Um, and he's definitely rocking the, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, sandal. You know, like like the comfy old man sandals he has on for sure. Um, you know, um, and uh, you know, I would say that his, um, you know, all the kids, not only his kids, kind of neighborhood kids as well, like the, um, they kind of think Shaka's like this kooky kind of, uh, you know, person that they're not sure if what he's telling is the truth or not, but it's like entertaining, you know. So they do tend to come over um, and uh, listen to to uh his uh tales you know um so they come over and uh he uh kind of he uh, leans back um and says here we go and then he says once upon a time not long ago no sorry sorry yeah uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 we're not no, gonna uh, not gonna do that but that would be cool you're not sorry but, but that doesn't exist in war neither are Maybe we it does Maybe it does. So, so like Shock has a big gold chain and an eye patch, and he's, uh, you know, uh, no, not doing that. Um, yeah. So, so uh, he starts to like say, um, <clears throat> so um, this was many, many years after I uh, sort of hung it up a bit. Um, I found. Uh, wait, uh, could, could, you, could you could you give me some more water, please? One of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I go, I go. Okay, thanks. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little parched, but, but like, remember, bring me the good water, not, not like the, I guess you call it the tap water. I need the good water with the infused fruit and stuff in it. Okay. The, the ice, the ice mountain, the, the flavored ice mountain, right? Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. Really, yeah. thank, thank you, thank you. And uh, can I have one more pillow, please? Someone, just like one more pillow from, 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 from my back. That would be great. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. I, I got you. I got you, Grumps. Okay, okay. All right. So, um, as I said, many years. Um, because I was a I was a pretty good fighter, everyone. I know I don't look it now, but um Well, that must have know. been so many years ago. Well, who who was that? Who was that? And like uh, Ashaka kind of looks up, he has okay. these like glad like these like sort of mm -hmm. like uh bifocal yeah. <laughs> uh glasses on. Who was that? It was that? Dennis. It was totally Dennis. No, it wasn't. It was totally Colin. Get out of here. No, it wasn't me. I swear it was Dennis. Whatever. Dennis, Colin, thank you for contributing. I appreciate <laughs> it. Because that just gives me a chance to uh, extend. It was many years ago. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of being, you know, living a good life is a good thing. I'm sorry. Living a long life is a good thing. Um uh and uh yeah so you probably just know me as that random puzzle shop owner that uh you know um has a bunch of uh you know associates that uh, have these powers but uh i also i had i used to have these powers as well um i know you haven't seen me really uh use them and then shaka is going to try to uh eldritch blast uh something in the house let's see uh, <laughs> maybe there's like a cup like a cup somewhere yeah uh so i'm rolling i want to see if i can do this uh, i feel like there is something specifically in the house specifically for eldritch blasting oh, oh like like i set it up just to prove this it was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay cool yeah um yeah 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 maybe maybe there's like some uh like some like some figurines like some stitched together figures maybe maybe some of Gosrick's old uh bobbleheads uh some of his old uh, Probably. uh yeah figurines uh let's see well, let's see guys uh uh all right so i'll say shaka um that takes a little bit for this blast that comes out he he kind of like he's and he goes hold on hold on hold on <laughs> And then he two hands it. He two hands it. Yes. And he does uh hit hit this uh figure. Huh? Wow. See? Wow. Hey, what the And somebody rolls in and just starts 
Oh, that's okay. Pop up Elger Blaston again. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling a story. Leave us alone. Uh, you kids now, you behave. Mm, we're so... behaving just now... fine. Tell grandpa to behave. Hey, hey, what, watch, your, watch your tongue now. Mind your elders. Mm. Mm, what, young man? Mm. You, you, cannot, you cannot get some uh, Uncle Gosrick's Ice Spider Sue if you don't act right. <laughs> It's the and best! That, and that sounds like something I would be upset about, so I'll be quiet now, I, no, I guess. No, Dennis loves ice spider soup. You should make him an extra serving tomorrow night. He yeah. loves it. All right, all, kids, settle down, or you, honestly, Grandpa may not get to the end of the story. I might not get to the end of the story. Shh. Is Grandpa going to die in the middle of the story? <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't he get to the end of it? <laughs> so, uh... I was doing these kind of Elder's Bass, but I could do them with one hand, believe it or not. I, I used to do four of them. I used to be able to do four of them. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I was uh, just opening the shop. I had it open for a couple years. Um, and one day, um, you know, this very, very, uh, very beautiful, attractive. Uh, uh, let's see, what would Shaka's uh, wife be? Uh, I'm going to roll to see what she would be. Uh, you're rolling your dice. Are you random generating your wife? Yes. You come up with <laughs> he you is open-minded. Yeah, like it's he doesn't yeah. have any limits. He does, you know. Yes. So I will go to the D and D Beyond character creator, uh, yes. just to get a uh, a uh, background and stuff like that. So that's what we're gonna do, guys. That's uh, because you know. Yeah. All right. So um, yeah. You you saw the. the the, the most beautiful um, uh, dwarf cleric um, that I've ever seen. Um, and she was just looking at puzzles and, uh, you know, I, I know you probably all know me as quite a, as quite the ladies man now, but I was, I was a little nervous, was a little nervous back then. Um, and then he looks at everyone's faces and he sees the exact look that Latia is making on half the kids, on half the kids uh, uh, faces. Um, and he says, uh, yeah, so, but uh, I kept my cool. I kept my cool. I was just behind the, the uh, place where we make all the transactions and um, business was a little slow. So I actually left behind the desk. Um, and is somebody willing to role play? Uh, I, uh, Okay. Uh, so, so I so I go up and say, um, uh, "Hey, my name's Shaka. I own this place, and by own, I mean I saved up for it, and I run it. How are you doing?" And my personal space is like. Uh, I was gonna it's right, ask. right there. I was gonna it's ask. Right there. I'm, I'm not past it. I'm not like in yeah. it, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm in. I'm in the boundary here. Let's see. Are you going to be the wife or shall I? I, you know, I'll do it. Um, I think <laughs> she just laughs. Like it's, it's not, it's, it's not a genuine laugh. It's like a startled, surprised. This joke is not good, but you are making like the best effort you can. Laugh. And she's just like. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so in like Shaka's mind, he's like, oh, well, she's laughing. So I got to keep going. Um, yeah. So if you're looking for something, here's a cool little uh, puzzle here. And he pulls out what um, kind of looks like a uh, it's a big box with like a wind up uh, thing um, 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 on it. Um, and it like also had a, a, a series of like numbers on it, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And like he says, well, you can put in your own. This is like your own personal. Uh, I call it uh, a shaka in the box. Um, you put in your own code here, like you put uh -huh. in your own, say, four digit code. Uh -huh. This is a shock in the box that only you can open. So it's okay. like your own personal thing. And when it opens uh, and then and then shaka tries to put in a code, it doesn't work. You try to put in another code, it doesn't work. He's like, "Whoa, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Okay. And, and and then he kind do of me, do me a favor. Him. Can can you roll me just a charisma, a charisma check? Ah, uh, yeah, of course, of course. 
I'll do a game roll. That's what. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what. That's, that's what we total, need. This is a total game roll. Uh, oh, I left because I was making a character. Hold on, let me go back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right, charisma. There we go. Well, I did a saving throw, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> natural one. <laughs> perfect. It's perfect. It's so good. Natural. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, go, I go, turn go. around and I'm trying to, uh, you see me like it looks like I'm entering a pin, but I'm also trying to like, you know, like, I'm, yeah, exerting, like I'm almost trying to, you know, make this thing open. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see uh i'll roll uh just a general charisma for this for for her this taller than normal dwarf cleric she's probably like four and a half feet as opposed to like three and a half four feet sure, sure. um she's not she's not wearing armor today but she always has her mace with her and you can see a holy symbol around her neck um She's got like soft brown skin and her hair is done up into like two, um, she's got dreadlocks that are done up into like two like really like thick braids that just come down her, come down her, uh, her back like this. And she says, oh, well, um, you know, maybe that one is a little too complicated for me. Do you have any simpler puzzles? I do, but maybe whole, just one more sec. And then you see it like open, but it like opens. Yeah, I'll just have to take this nat one all the way. Uh, it like opens, but the character who is an adorable little Chaka looking uh, character flies out of the box on like a coil kind of mm-hmm. flies out. And then like Shaka says, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> then then you just put it back in and this, you know, it's your own personal thing. So I would she love for you to have it. it. She 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 catches the the shaka the coiled shaka, and like takes the box from you and looks inside the box where the spring is clearly broken, right? Yes. She it is. puts the she puts the coil back in the box and there's a glow on the box that she casts mending on it. Yeah, so she mends it for you, and um, can you put in a new code while it's open? Um, I can try. Usually you have to have it closed and then you do it, you know, but uh, I can work on that in the old workshop back there, you know, I mean, if you want to, you know, someday check out the workshop, that might be, well, I mean, I'm not trying to be forward or anything, just, you know, just if you happen to come, come back, maybe like maybe after we have dinner one day, you know, maybe something like that, uh, have coffee or something, uh, maybe, you know, good, uh, you know, I mean, I, I make all these myself, uh, and there's, no, they're, not, they're, they're real good. They're real good. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Yeah. I'll I'll take this one. And maybe I'll be back. Okay. And you know what? That one's on the house. That one's on the house. Okay. Yeah, I'll Just see if t- I can figure figure this one out. And if not, I mean I'll I'll be back. Yeah. Just tell your friends. Okay. And by and- friends, I mean you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And, thanks. And he he is he is he is pointing. You you're getting thing. You're getting. Oh my god! Like you're getting this. <laughs> Please finish that word. He's, he's, finger guns. Finger. Yeah. Guns. Thank you. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No. She she takes the the shaka in a box, and I don't think you actually introduced yourself. So it looks oh, well, like you. No. 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 It, yeah. Oh. Looks, oh okay. It, it looks like you. So she looks at it and she looks at you and she says, all right, Shaka, I'll be yeah. back. And I don't think I got your name either, actually. It is her name. <laughs> oh, I was, I was going to let you create it. But uh, let, let's say uh, uh, Dara. 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 Okay, cool. Dara. I'm Dara. Yeah. Hey, Dara. Um, yeah, just come back. I'll be here. Um, I promise I'll uh, make a special puzzle for you. Okay. And like as she's leaving, like she is extremely amused by this entire circumstance. But go ahead and make me an insight check. Yeah. Uh, do do do. So fun. 
right? Another one. Oh my god. Another wow. one? Another one. Wow. Why did you, why did you wow. do Can you maybe that? refresh? Can you refresh <laughs> that right? tab for us, yeah. Sharif? Maybe just refresh. You, F5, it's fine. <laughs> you cannot parse the the cause of the smile on her face. Um, but she she does end up like she leaves and you don't know how that went, but I think she comes back a couple days later. Wait. And that's so, how it that's how it yeah. begins. So like the way I imagine is that's actually what happens. What Shaka tells the kids, you know, is like uh I was, had gonna, I was gonna ask. I had <laughs> had this amazing puzzle and it was just it was just hearts from the beginning. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say love at first sight, uh, mm -hmm. but more like, you know, I mean, she saw a, a sort of the puzzling genius. She was intrigued and, and uh, things at, went from there. At this point, a, 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 a dwarven woman who's carrying a tray of familiar looking cookies uh, walks in and passes the cookies out to the kids. Um, she picks up the uh, Shaka in a box that Shaka Eldritch blasted off of the the mm -hmm. the mantle or whatever, and she says, "One of these days, I'm going to stop bending this as it glows in oh. her as it glows in her in her hands." And she puts it back together and sets it on the mantle again. Oh my god, you're gonna make me cry. I yeah, know, that, that, that's that's same. so good. Oh, uh, oh. Very good. Um, and that, that very heartwarming tale leads us to fade to black with your grandchildren and, and children all around you just going, that's nice, grandpa. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, but, you know, your, your, your lovely dwarven cleric wife is there. She's like, no, no, it's true. It's true. It's true. You know, doing the, it's okay. He's. It's a true story. Just go eat your ice spiders too. <laughs> <laughs> your ice spider stew and your bitty cookies. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you dip it in the stew. Yeah. Oh god, no. Hey, it's incredible. There's uh, there's spider milk in there. It evens it out. <laughs> and with that disgusting segue, Gosric. Yeah. <laughs> Gosric. It's been a little while since the mm -hmm. Chult incident. Mm -hmm. And you've had time to sit and think and reflect, especially about being a golem for a while. Tell us, where are you? Are you like by the fountain? Are you even still in Waterdeep? As you sit and ponder your your part time, your partial partial time as a golem and what that meant for you and did to you. Yeah, I think it's probably like. What maybe like a month or two out from the Schult incident? Yeah, around the, around the same time as Dahani and Walter's discussion. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, um, it I feels think... really clear that we all just like went our separate ways for a little bit after this. Yeah, 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 yeah. just gonna say I'm I'm back here like keeping notes for us and trying to track timelines and compare mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that we all came back to Waterdeep, and then after about two months, we all mm -hmm. needed to do things because that's also when Virgil and Kent were out in character. Right. right, right. Yes, yeah, so that's why I was like making sure i said how long sure yeah. no we appreciate that um and it's easier because i think the question would differ depending on how much time it's been so uh, no no more than three months cool 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 cool. i think that's still pretty recent um and i think we find gosrick actually out in the woods um in a mountain or a hill like there is a raised elevated land mass that is not on the maps yet. And we know over the time that Gosrick has been coming here and sitting on this hill. Um, and somehow over the time it's raised and gotten higher and higher. And now it's a, it like kind of overlooks the treetops and sort of, he's able to see water deep and also the surrounding forest around it. Um, and I think you just see Gosrick just like kind of sitting on top of the hill, looking and man, it so interesting. Without that one, this would run over. 
And without this one, that would not survive. If that would run over, there's chaos, no deciding of what to do and how things would be. If that ran over and just existed, well, then it would starve itself. It would grow too big. Not enough fuel for it to consume. And you just see guys are just like, Nimrod's is self-sufficient now. Like Brian and Duo do a good job. Hell, there's two duos now. And new duo is like probably taking up some of the responsibility as well. Um, they've got folks getting situated. Like, I think Gosrick's really trying to understand what it means. What does it even mean to be in society? Um, for so long, he was not a part. Of, like, truly, there was a moment where he did not have to consider himself a member of a society. Not what was his role, what was his contribution, whether he was taking things from other people. Like he was just a construct. And I think that has been kind of sitting with him a little bit. Um, and I and I even think while he's sitting here, his uh, squirrel buddy visits him quite a bit um, up on this hill, whose name I so I, 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 I cannot remember for the life of me. I know it's not Greg, but Greg the squirrel is what keeps jumping in my head. Um, <laughs> That was the we... one episode last season where I was playing so much that I didn't take notes about what happened. So if you if you all remember uh, 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 what that squirrel's name is, yeah, I don't, I don't remember, remember the squirrel's name. Was it, Kevin? It, it, was, was Kevin? it was something. Unfortunately, it was so generic because yeah, yeah. I'm so bad at names that yeah, I yeah, never yeah. remember which one it was. I don't know, chat. If so you can like... remind us, if you got. <laughs> I feel like Let's Chad knows my go to is usually something like Steven or Bob or yeah. Kevin or something like that. I think so. it was Kevin. Let's say it's Kevin. Let's, right. I, I love I'm, that I'm, there's a Kevin the squirrel and a Kevin the seagull. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. perfect. Perfect. It's a very popular name in the Forgotten Realms. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. In the animal portion of the <laughs> yeah, Forgotten yeah, yeah, Realms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a thousand percent. Oh uh, yeah, and, and I think uh, Kevin kind of walks up on Gazric just like murmuring about how symbiotic and also toxic this bond is between industry and nature. And is your squirrel buddy kind of sitting with you? Is he sitting and pondering with you before I try to be a squirrel? Or if you want to be a squirrel, if you want to have you honey be a squirrel, I'm, I'm going to leave it to you all. Uh, but I really just, you hear Gazer just singing about like, what makes a species invasive? Is it the encroachment on its neighborhood, on its those around it? Because I mean, shoot, then all of nature is an invasive species. It needs to be invasive by its very definition to grow and expand. But is that not capitalism in itself? The constant necessity to grow and always be growing and building and getting larger and 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 consuming everything around it. Oh, hey, Kevin. Sorry, I had a moment where I was like, do I want to try and be the squirrel? But I, my voice mod is not working and I was going <laughs> to hang on. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find there's a I'm, chance I can do the voice. No, no, no do your thing. Gazer just looks out. You and don't have to. You don't have to do a voice if you don't want to. I know. But if it's available to me, <laughs> it's not. So I can't. Oh, well. Um. All right. Well, <laughs> Oh, hi, bud. Hi. How's it been going? Oh, yeah, I'm like, fine. How are you? What's been up? Give a little a scratch behind the ears. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Uh, you know, it's been a little bit. Been around. Just kind of... Um, hey, you've been kind of here, you know, for a little bit. How how old are you? Mm. Squirrel years? Time, yeah, yeah. Time flow is different for squirrels, but I'm like a grown-up. Yeah, you're you're an adult squirrel. So you you've you've done, seen it. Um, man, I don't get it at this moment. Like, I really, I've been trying to figure out how to be and to exist in this space. Um, I thought I was doing a lot of good work in my my uh, community, and, and, and in some ways I am, but it feels, I don't know. I feel like I'm uh, kind of torn. You know, honestly, Gosrick, I gotta tell you, you and all your humanoid friends, you all worry too much. You know? What? You're a good guy. Mm -hmm. You do good things. You help people. 
Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I had a friend once who finished, he was very industrious and he finished his hibernation squirreling away, which is kind of a weird thing for me to say. Never mind, it was a bad turn of phrase. Uh, <laughs> like really early one year. Mm -hmm. And he helped some other of us, you know, find acorns and put them away and get ready. Well, it turns out that a lot of the acorns that he helped us find had a disease, a little mm. bug. And a lot of people's stores just got devastated that year. Oh, bud. Yeah, but you know yeah. what? We don't like you all. We didn't stand here and say, oh, well, it's all his fault because he helped him. And he, nah, he did a good thing and then a bad thing happened. And that's just the way the world is. You can't plan for everything. I can't plan for everything. Listen, I got to tell you, I, me, the squirrel, very on board with that. This person who is feeding me words, though, very bad at it. So I understand your hesitation with that. Concept. No, no, I, I, I get it. I understand because I. Oh, but uh, from early on, the concept of of of. Knowing the cycle of the seasons, knowing the tracking patterns of the animals nearby Icewind Dale, knowing the movement of the birds and, and the moose and the mammoths allowed me to grow my business. It allowed me to sell things to, I mean, heck, Ice Spider Sue is a delicacy now in Waterdeep. That did not exist before. And only because I have to write that in our notes now. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I, I was able to source materials to get the exports and imports together. I mean, I I plan. I I I I know how to make sure a sapling grows big and strong from its very very planting. And yet, I, I feel like the happiest I've been is when I did not think. You're a good person. You want to do the things that are right. You want to help people. You want to take care of people. It's not always going to go great. One day you'll die. All that's true. Hmm. But as long as I've known you, you've worried so much about this that you've done way less good since we met than all the stories you've told me about from before. Stop okay. worrying so much, Kazrik. That? Hey, Kevin. Thank you. I really appreciate this conversation. You've enlightened me quite a bit. Um, he takes a piece of a leaf uh, hmm. and like, begins to uh, take a bit of uh, wood and like slightly burn it so it's a little bit of ash in his hand, we can druid craft, mm -hmm. and like writes a little note on this leaf mm -hmm. and says, hey, you know, I send this to the rivals. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna be back in five days. And then Gazrik sort of moves over and like stands on top of, uh, this hill that is like every day of sitting here, it's gotten higher and higher. And he, he just senses something. Um, and he starts willing the earth over his form a little bit. And he kind of positions himself and reconstructs the golem. This time out of his own nature and vines mm -hmm. and begins to then just sit like a statue on top of this hill. Kazrik, you okay in there? Oh, okay, I'll take the note. Uh, okay, bye, I'll come check on you. And with, oh, go ahead. You just hear like uh, two rocks like kind of shift. Uh -huh. And like you look back and there's a thumbs up. <laughs> the yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. I love it. Yeah. And uh, existential dread Gosrick Golem takes his place. And we fade to black as Kevin takes that note to the rivals. And that's where we're going to wrap this week, y'all. That was a journey. Thanks for coming with me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> great job. Great job. Great job. Well. Oh, yeah, you got to stay here. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do got to stay here. We got to uh, do our outros now. I know. I know. I'm just being, I'm being dramatic. No, 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 no. <laughs> do you want to go last in our outro since we've got now, uh, or should we just go reverse order that we did at the top? Uh, let's, I'm going to roll a D20. Ha ha. Perfect answer to that question. Uncowlockwise. Um, yeah. Oh, uncow I, can't I kept looking it. to Latia to do the, the rival's question command because yeah. uh, you always beat me to it. 
But I was yeah, going to say, we will, we will try to get to questions here in chat sometimes because we've been trying to squeeze as much story in as we can during these past episodes. We haven't gotten to all the questions, but we have been keeping them. Yes. Also, if you are in the Rivals of Waterdeep Discord, we do have a Rivals question channel there where you can ask one question encompassing all a, a, encompassing a character's entire time with the show, including NPCs if the DM can remember for that NPC. <laughs> um, so please feel free to ask questions. We will do our best to get to them today. If our artros don't allow us, then we promise that we will answer them. All right, uh, I rolled an 18, so I'm gonna make us do something fun. We're gonna popcorn it, oh. starting in the bottom corner with Eugenio. Hi everybody, I'm Eugenio. Uh, you can find me at DM Jazzy Hens. Uh, on Twitter and Twitch. Uh, tomorrow night, you can find me at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, uh, along with Brian, uh, over on Codename Entertainment's Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash CNE Games. Uh, we're going to be playing episode three of this season of A Familiar Quest. Very exciting. It's the quest for Pest. Uh, they're headed out towards uh, the eastern part of Faerun in the direction of Thay and the Thay Mount, looking for their long-lost friend, Pest. And this week, we have a very special guest. Johnny Stanton is going to be joining us uh tomorrow night and for the following episode so episodes three and four uh we have johnny joining us with his earth day familiar that he created twiggy the twig blessing not a twig blight he's much nicer than that mm -hmm. uh so johnny will be joining us for a couple of weeks starting tomorrow night so that's very exciting uh come and hang out with us eight o'clock eastern twitch.tv slash cne games uh and then i will not be streaming on tuesday tuesday are the gaming mag awards uh so i won't be live then but normally tuesdays and thursdays i'm also live on my channel you can come hang out there and that's me all right who are you popcorning to i will popcorn to masood hey it's masood i've been gazwick nomrad but you can find me on the internet at uh, marood boy on instagram and twitter m-a-h-r-u-d-e-b-o-i Y'all, uh, I'm here with the Rivals, having a great time doing stuff in Chicago and doing some performances. So if you're in the area, follow my Instagram to keep on top of what's going on there. Um, for myself, in terms of uh, things to note, um, yeah, I'll be back with the Rivals in two weeks. And in the meantime, be playing Idol Champions. You got that new Gosrick skin out there. Go be sure to pick that up. Um, also, if folks are looking for a funny dude on their streams, let me know. I'm looking to fill up my schedule for the summer. Love to play along. All right, and who are you passing it off to? Oh, what a tough question. What a tough question. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Sharif. Hey, Sharif. <laughs> uh, you can find me at sharifjackson.com, S-H-A-R-E-F jackson.com, or Sharif Jackson on all social networks. Uh, make sure to check out Equation Play for my latest videos, math, science, yeah. games, and stuff. Um, also, um, a little bit, well, not off topic, but um, uh, the university that I work for right now, Rutgers University, just um our uh current well temporarily suspended a strike but we've been on strike for a week mm -hmm. um withholding labor uh to get better contracts it's been pretty uh interesting the first strike at state university history it's a 250 year old uh university and i do like my gaming class there as well as um, some map stuff so um kind of a big deal um so 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 like, that's been taking up a lot of my time union stuff um, but, uh, aside from that, y'all, uh, yeah, just, uh, really, really looking forward to the rest. These episodes have been so cool and yeah. I hope that you guys are in on the after shows because we really dig into it as well. And I'm looking forward to, uh, the rest. All right. And who are you passing off to? I am popcorning it to Latia. Thanks. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, hi, it's me. Smooth, smooth. <laughs> Mine's in the other room. <laughs> it's been sitting here. I'm, I'm planning on putting dice in and it's just been sitting here and I was like, popcorning. Oh, okay. I um, saw it at a regal theater, so I didn't get one. Uh, <laughs> um, I am Latia Jaquis. You can find me everywhere at Latia Jaquis because that's my name and there's only one of me. I say that every week. Um, you can find me. I, I stream every Tuesday at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Central on twitch.tv slash DD Beyond, um, doing weird, wacky stuff. Uh, last week, um, my fellow community manager tried to kill us all with a Discord monster. Uh, it was really fun. Uh, and I died almost. Uh, so we do stuff like that. So come hang out with us on Tuesdays, and then you'll see me back here in two weeks for the next episode of Rivals. And then I, I, there's only one person to popcorn it to, so Tanya, take it away. Uh, me, I'm wait. Sorry for t wait, what about Masood? Brian. Brian. Brian, that, it's Brian. you. 
Go. Okay, I'm sorry, that's... Brian. I love you. Either way, it's because, no, it's it's because I didn't pass it to you and everyone assumed I would. So yeah. <laughs> oh, I assumed that I was the last person you would pass it to. Yeah. Like, well, um, I'm, wow. Because, well, we don't, you know, it's whatever. Hi, I'm Brian. Uh, I'm Urban Bohemian pretty much everywhere on the internet, except where TikTok, where you have to add an underscore. You can catch me streaming on my channel on Twitch. You can catch me here with the rivals. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, you can catch me on a familiar quest. Uh, we are in series three. Uh, Eugenio explained all of that, which is lovely. Uh, you can see me there with Eugenio in the DM seat. Uh, Kelly Butler, Megan Kenrick, Alicia Marie, and myself, and Johnny Stan is joining us for the next two episodes. And that is tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash CNE Games. On Tuesday, I also will not be streaming because I will be at the Gaming Awards in New York City. Um, we are allowed to say that I'll be presenting an award. Yeah. And uh, right. unfortunately, they won't be able to broadcast that live on Twitch as planned. So you will be able to see their awards broadcast on Twitch the following Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Thursday is the season finale of Star Trek Picard. So nobody talked to me. And then <laughs> I'll be back streaming again this weekend. And then in two weeks with the rivals. Tanya you now it actually leaves me uh <laughs> i've been your your kind of sort of dm for this for the session um i too will be in new york so imagine look at imagine that. can you believe <laughs> i know so half the cast is going to be in new york at the gaming awards and i actually will be presenting as well i'm passing the torch to this year's gaming icon ashley birch okay. uh so nice. she's awesome i'm believe pronouns are she if they are not i will they are. amend that um but yeah she is this year's gaming icon thank you eugenio and uh i believe she's actually giving a pre-recorded message i don't know if she'll physically be there and then um i'm in new york the rest of the week so no streams until i'm back and then one more week and then i don't know what's gonna happen my streaming schedule i'll figure it out because things were afoot so yeah that's it and we have time for one question. I think we'll take the short question. Um, I don't know who wants to answer for Laren. Should I answer or should someone else? <laughs> I mean, it was your. I was gonna say, Masood or Masood or you? Since, yeah. Since um, you've you, both done, yeah. yeah. I can I can voice Laren uh, or answer this question <laughs> for Laren. Uh, uh, unless you unless you're chomping at the bit for it, like you if you've got an answer for I'll it. ask the question and then whoever speaks first can do it. <laughs> oh, um, so for Laren, obviously you'll never tell him, but Virgil's pretty cool, right? Eh, I guess whatever. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> yes! That was so perfect. <laughs> that was so that was good. I have been a moody teen. Let me I regret <laughs> inviting this kid back to Waterdeep. That was fantastic. Uh, uh, <laughs> and with that, we actually are finishing on time this week. Hey, hey! Look at that. Where are we heading next? Where are we taking folks? We don't go anywhere. We are going to uh, put up our our thank you note to all of to all the people who support us on Indiegogo to make this season possible. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go see what Smolecule is doing, uh, mm -hmm. someone we don't get a chance to ever raid. They're lovely, got a chance to meet them at a couple PAXs. Uh, I don't know what they're playing, but we're going to go see what Smolecule is up to. So get your Yay! get your whooshes ready, and uh, we'll see you in not one, but two weeks. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Peace.